Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to part two of um, Altering a Book into a December Daily. I have got a few pages cut out, but um, that's all I've done, guys, um, because I didn't feel like you'd want to sit there and watch me measure and cut. Uh, keeping it about 15 to 20 pages, because as I said, I don't want to... I don't want this to end up gator mouth, although it could very well still end up because I've got so many things in my mind I want to add to it. But let me just show you. So what I've got um, are tea dyed papers. I've got some digitals, and I've tried to vary the size just because I like that look. And then here's another um, one that I've cut. And I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to alter the sizes a bit so that it's not all you know, one size. I've got loads of notebooks I've picked up at Car Boots, and I just want to start combining all of these things. I've got old um, hymn sheets that I wanted to add to it. Uh, you know, just a, a nice eclectic mix. Now, I've got a couple of these German. I don't know why German just seems to suit December and Christmas to me. I just think the the writing of German language and particularly these pages because they're very aged and I thought how fun to um, add those. I just think I think they're going to really really look nice in there. Okay so first thing I want to do is I'm going through I've been very specific on my Edith Holden pages to only use the December um, and then I've got this old um, ledger page. I'll probably, you know, do a pocket on that. And then I've added Christmas cards. I've got two Christmas cards that I'm going to incorporate. I just think they look super cool in a in a December. And then another um, music sheet that I've folded up. I've already stitched that into a pocket. So you're kind of getting a feel now for where we're going with this. So the, the only two pages I need to sort out at the moment are the German. So I wanted you guys to see this because if you're new to junk journaling, you might wonder if you're wanting a book page in your journal in the correct orientation that you would read a book. And you're thinking to yourself, how do they do that? How, how do you bind that? There's a couple of ways. You can be very, very meticulous on choosing your books. If you choose them that are sewn in, uh, I don't know that I've got an example. I don't know if this book is. Now this one's glued. If they're glued, yeah, that one's been glued. You you can't. Oh no, this has been sewn. Okay, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Do you see the stitch? Old, old books usually have been sewn in. It's the newer ones because they've gotten very cheap on manufacturing. You can't do it. So in this instance, and I'll go ahead and do it on this one because this book is going to be a journal cover. Let me show you why. Isn't that a fabulous cover? So I'm gonna make a I'm gonna gut this and just leave it as is and, and so anyway, oh gosh, where did that go? Ah, okay. So let me show you the difference. If you got one like this, you can gently pull that out. No problem. That can go straight into a journal. The only thing you might have to alter is just trim some of the sizing down to fit your journal. Okay? But these were old book pages, but the, I couldn't do it with those. So if you don't know this already, you can take masking tape or washi. And I happen to have some Christmas washi. I'm so surprised. Um, 
I hadn't realized that I had this in my stash. So uh, you're going to want to opt for a wider one. Now I am concerned that I'm going to have enough of this to do 20. I won't. I know I won't, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll, I'll find a substitute. You can use uh, masking tape as well. So I'm only going to want it to be the um, length of the smallest. So just go over it slightly. So the first thing I'm going to do is just I think I'll just try to lay the washi down and put the paper on top of it if I can do it. So try to go about halfway so that it's going to stick well. And at this point, before you put that one, go ahead and trim that. Even to the page height. Okay, and so now bring the other one in and just figure out, it's not going to really matter on this one, but just, I'd probably try to center that. Leave just about an eighth of an inch so that your tape has something else to grip to besides the um, book page. Let me just make sure. I mean, it is going to cover some of the, the the text, but that's okay. And so now I'm just going to snip that little bit there. And then just go ahead and fold it. So see, now it's ready. You're going to sew straight through that, and that will reinforce that. So that's just another little tip, guys. All right, so let's gather this pile of papers in the order that we're going to have it. And if I feel like I want to make any changes before I get it in there, I'll do it now. Okay, so... <clears throat> Okay, so this is some craft um, Christmas paper I picked up really... I, what happened was I bought a bunch of this when it was half off. And so I'm not going to worry about it being all color coordinated because I just... I want to use up everything, guys. Alright, so I'm just going to add, add these in. here and there until I get it the way I like it. And these were really cool little um, Christmas cards because they look how narrow they are. I thought they were just adorable. I don't know. I'm trying I'm debating whether I want to put that in. I don't think I will after all. This is what I do. I, I come through and kind of get an idea and then sometimes I make changes to it. So I put now this is a little Christmas bag and I've just trimmed off the edge so it's it's a little, nice little pocket there. I'll add some more. This is old um, paper. Get that like that there. And then this one I already kind of had. <coughs> That's my Edith Holden. And I'm mixing some um, of the white paper to contrast, but I think for the Christmas it's going to look really nice. I've got I've got another Christmas card, but I think I'll put that towards the front this time. So and this was a um, Christmas pudding recipe I got off the internet, printed that, backed it with another digital. This is a Christmas doily, bridge score pad, and another digital. 
I love that one with the little skates. I used to ice skate when I was growing up. We could do it back then. It was cold enough in Michigan. You could go out on the the ponds would freeze. And I that just I love that. It reminds me of my skates. Okay, so I'm wondering, I've got the envelope from this card, and I'm actually thinking about adding it in, but it might be worth doing some tweaking prior to. Actually, I'm just going to trim it a lot off here, thinking that's going to be a, a pocket. Okay, and then I'll sort this out, because once I trim that, that's going to be floppy, but we're not going to worry about that. We'll alter it later, I think. For the, the purposes of this part, I just want you guys to see, you know, me gathering it up. And uh, so that's actually going to come over here, but I don't care. I might do something with that as well. So that'll be a pocket on this side. Um, do we want Santa there? I'll put him on this side, I think. And then this is going to flip out, so you have a little extra. I don't know. I'll do something with that. You have to a, a further along. I kind of like the idea of him on the, f the front page because what's nice is you've got that blank. You see what I mean? When they open it up, you're going to have Santa there and do some writing. And then this will flip over. So yeah, that's I think I'm quite happy with that. So let's count. We got one. I never count the envelopes in my page count because even though they're going to serve as a pocket, I just don't. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we've got 19 pages. I wouldn't go any more than that because you can already see that's not having done anything. And that's, that's going to fit nicely there. I hope I got that cut enough. Let me just make sure, guys, because... That's actually going to come out there. I think that's okay, yeah. Okay, so at this point, <clears throat> we're going to just do a little bit of, I want to do a little bit of stenciling. I'm going to do some sewing on the pages. And then, um, let me see how I'm doing on time. This could be a long video, guys. So, all right. So let me just, I don't have any Christmas stencils. It's, um, in the past, um, I've not done particularly well with um, the Christmas journals, but these are going to be for friends and family mostly, so that's why I don't, I've got quite a few Christmas stamps because I do my own Christmas cards, but um, the stencils I've not invested in, but this is a doily look, so that's totally fine with me. It's just to give a little bit more interest. And I'm not going to do a whole lot because this <clears throat> is going to be filled with the recipient's uh, memorabilia and their own journaling, so I don't want this to be overly filled. That's the whole point of the December Daily. Um, And that I'll probably add a, a pocket so that'll flip over. So um, I'll just put a little bit of stencil here. I 
It's very subtle, this one. And I'll probably end up with some trim on that. Oh yeah, that's what the other thing we'll try to do today is I've got some Christmas trim. Um, when I went to Hobby Lobby and, and bought up, I didn't know I was going to be moving to England. And last year, gosh, I can't believe it's been almost a year since I've been home. Um, that was not intended. That was coronavirus. But um, <clears throat> when I went back, I paid for an extra bag. And I, it was full of Christmas stuff that I had bought from Hobby Lobby. So I got that trim. We're going to stitch that on. And then I would hope... I haven't even looked at this. This might be too thick, but that was down to 75 cents. But yeah, I think we'll be okay. See, won't that be pretty? Gosh, I don't know. I won't probably, I don't know. Oh, I do like it. Yeah. I'll just run a stitch, a straight stitch down the middle of that, I think. That's pretty. And then this one. I think this one's kind of a stretchy. It is, and boy, is that... Oh, that stuff's a pain to try to get onto a page. I don't... If I had known that, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Cause, but isn't that going to be so pretty? That's going to be really, really pretty. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be using both of those. Okay. So, at this point, guys, I'm going to have to leave you. And I'm going to have to go over to the machine and get some of these things stitched. And do some decorative stitching. Assuming my sewing machine is going to cooperate with me today. And then, what I want to try to achieve today is the hidden spine sewn in so you guys can see that and then once all the you know the signatures sewn in then we can really start um, you know adding pockets and things okay so I'm going to stop the camera go to the machine and I'll be back to show you what I've done okay guys um, I took this over to the machine just did a little bit of stitching here and there. Um, okay, what I found with the particular trim I had, stitching didn't work, so I ended up just gluing that, which had I known, that would have been further down the road, but anyways, it is what it is. So, um, just a bit of stitching I wanted to add, and then this pocket, um, this was a little bit different. I just stitched two pieces of cardstock that I had notched out and then I put, I glued them where the paper is going to be sandwiched between. That way I've got a little pocket here and then here. I wanted to make sure that was open on both sides so we can add a little tag to that because I'm not going to overly embellish as I said, but I do want to add a few pockets and, and a couple of tags throughout and then I've got um, a couple other little ideas. Okay, so we are now, I think, ready to do, to go ahead and sew this in. And um, I don't know how clear I'm going to be able to make the stitching of this. So I would recommend, there are some great tutorials um, out there for the hidden spine. I took a course for mine. Um, to learn how to do it, but I do know there are some free tutorials on YouTube. You know, you just probably don't get the quality of the filming as you would with um, paying for a little course. They're not much, but I'll show you as best I can. It's no different than the five-hole pamphlet stitch. It's just uh, that you are going to want a little template of cardstock and I wouldn't get it too heavy just kind of like a medium weight cardstock um, and then just go ahead and mark out your um, your five holes and get those punched 
and then you're going to have to go ahead obviously and do this and then I'll show you how to put it in because um, okay so let me just get this all ready and this is the way I do um, even if I sew in this is the way I do mine I just make a mark uh, everybody's got their own way, but this works for me because I don't have a big, ca a thick catalog. A lot of people use a catalog and just place the paper, um, but because I don't, this is how I've opted to do it. Thread here ready. Now, the benefit to a hidden spine is that when you are working in a journal for writing, um, it's going to lie flat versus just sewing that directly into the spine. And uh, I wonder if I've got a journal here to show you. Let me see if I can show you the difference quickly, guys, because it is pretty, pretty big difference. Okay, so you'll have a bit of a gap in a hidden spine versus sewing it directly into that. And look, when you, when you lie that down, open it up, I mean, you see how flat that becomes so that when you're, I mean, this one's got, unfortunately, that was, <laughs> that was a bit bulky, but let me take the first, like here. You see how flat that is? So it's much better if it's going to be a journal that's going to be a lot of journaling in. Um, I classify the journals in a journaling journal or a pretty journal because some people just, and myself included, I collect them just because I like, I like journals and I don't necessarily document in each of them. Now this would be your standard where you've sewn it in um, journal, and although this one's not been embellished, it lies pretty flat, but you can see once you start bulking that up with pockets, because this one doesn't have any, this is just um, paper, uh, that makes it, you're going to lose probably, uh, I don't know, sixth or an eighth of the page because of bulk. So you're only, it just makes it harder to journal. Okay, so anyways, there, gosh, that's 15 minutes of your life you can't get back. <laughs> okay, so anyways, I just wanted to show that because some people might wonder, well, what's the difference? Because these are harder to do. The hidden spine takes more time, I'll tell you straight up. If you're new, I wouldn't recommend doing this as your first or second journal because you might find it a bit frustrating. They're not particularly hard, but... Um, I just think when you're first starting out, I don't know what's happened. I usually have a little, um, let me put something down here, guys. Um, I've normally got a little uh, c uh, foam cushion, and that's been misplaced, it looks like. So let me just get these punched through. This is pretty thick, so, because remember, I've got two greeting cards in here, so it does take a bit of strength. Um, what was I talking about? Mm. Yeah, the hidden spine, um, you know, you just, you don't want any extra frustration when you're starting your journaling. <clears throat> so just go with a, a simple um, five or three hole pamphlet st stitch to get started, and then you can work up to these. Okay, so I've got that punched through. 
like I said, because you've got those, I've got the greening cards in there, but I bought them for that purpose. I was like, oh, oh that'd be so cute to add. Uh, I've been wanting to do, do some more of these. Okay, so let me go ahead and punch my holes on. This is the template I've already done. Um, <clears throat> some people recommend more than this to hang over. This is about two and three quarters and I've just done a one inch because that's it's dictated by your journal, uh, book cover as to how wide you want to go because see that's that's an inch and that's so that's what I've done is I've scored an inch on um, so that's left you know a little bit because you're going to fold that back over the journal once that's done and then I'll show you how we're going to I just want to go ahead and get this punched because th this is what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up gluing that to the side so that that's not glued that'll just it'll just move I feel like it's taken me like three times as many words today to um, explain what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't think about enough coffee. Okay, now the other thing is we're going to put a little bit of cheesecloth on that. It's just, uh, you don't have to do this. If you don't like the look of it when I'm done, then by all means you can skip this step. This is just how I've done it. And uh, it, it just will have a little bit of cheesecloth at each end. And it makes this not quite as noticeable, if you know what I mean. So. Let me just go ahead and glue that down. Now, if you wanted to have a design paper showing, then use double sided, but I am not that bothered about it. So that's that's another thing you want to keep in mind. All right. Let's get this sewn into, the signature is going to be sewn into this, and then we'll, and like I said, guys, I probably, you're probably not going to get a great view, but you can definitely get these. Oh, I t I'll tell you what, I'm going to start from the back. I don't want to see... Now, this is another thing. If you want to have dangles in the center, start from the inside, and you could have... Actually, I will. Be... No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> I was going to add a couple of jingle bells, but it, it's just going to bulk it out too much. So, because I don't want to have the strings hanging down, I'm going to start from the outside. And just take the tail and tuck that under your thumb there and then come back up into that second one. And it's it's a little bit fiddly till you get a couple of these tightened and then it'll get a little bit easier. And your papers as you if you've been doing this you know those papers boy they shift. I mean, look, I've got them all clamped, but they still shift around. Yep, that one's shifted for some reason. Okay, let me fiddle with this a bit, guys. This is, it's so difficult to do when you're trying to stay on camera so you guys can at least see what I'm doing.
So I will be carrying on, as you know, with the um, pocket file folder in conjunction with this. Um, but I just thought this would be kind of fun because, you know, maybe some people are interested in the file folder and are, are thinking in the same terms as me of uh, making a little jump start on Christmas. So I thought, well, this would be fun to have two going at the same time. Hopefully it will appeal, you know, I'll have something that's going to be of interest to everybody is, is what I'm trying to do is mix it up, guys. Because not everybody's into journal making. You know, I'm going to try to do some, you know, if, if time permits, I'm going to try to do a few Christmas cards. Maybe just some regular greeting cards. I don't know how many people do that anymore. Um, I love getting cards. Oh, gosh, I love it so much. But like I said, I don't know how many people do that anymore. But I'm going to be doing it here, so I hope, I hope it'll be something that you enjoy. All right, nearly, nearly got it. And now, let me take these off, and then I want to snug this up really, really good. I'll cover that up. That's on the back of that card. I'll cover that up. So what I do is I open up and just see, make sure that that the um, my thread is is not loose in there. So that's good and tight. So just tying that off, and now we can snip it. And I put that in my little excess pile there. Okay, guys, let me make sure I've got this in the right direction. Yep, that's the top. You can't believe how many times I've I've put a signature in and it'd be upside down. Wow, it's happened so many times I've lost count. <laughs> You'd think by now uh, that wouldn't still happen, but it does. It does. It does. All right. So, this is what you've ended up with, right? And now you can kind of just mold that a bit. But what we're going to do is where we had scored that, because we want that one inch, we're just, you can probably see it better from here. From, from that score line out, we're going to add some glue. And I would recommend a really heavy glue, so I'm going to switch over to this stuff as much as I hate to do it. Um, and you can just lift up that cheesecloth if, if you need to or put it directly on top. Just don't go over that score line because you don't want the spine glued. Okay, and then now you say a little prayer and uh, center that. Make sure it's it's where you want it to be up here. That looks about right. I'm gonna go down slightly, and now just hold down that. Um, like I said, just making sure you've got that in the center of. Just go over that a couple of times, guys, and at this point, um, I wouldn't fiddle with it much. I'd get, let that sit and really get a good, you know, it's adhered really well. See, look at how neat the center of that signature is. So I'm just going to clip this together, and I'm just going to let that dry before we carry on because remember we've already done our front cover and the back cover and then we can get those glued down and then we'll be starting on 
just a few little embellishments and whatever we want to do to the front. Um, so let me sit that over and I'll go grab a box, guys. I've got a little box to show you guys. Okay, hang on. Okay, so this is the only thing I've gotten done so far is, um, and this is Miss Angela. Thank you, Angela. Um, she has, let me find it. Where did I go with it? Here we go. She's so clever, Angela is. She's got these little templates, guys, in her shop. Uh, because some of us in the UK cannot get our hands on like the little um, CD folders, you know the little mini ones. So she's got all these wonderful templates and she's taken um, the seed envelope that Target was selling and she's put that out um, so that you guys, you know, if you can't get your hands on those. So I highly recommend this. This is Angela Kerr, K-E-R-R -R Designs on Etsy. Um, so what I did um, is I took Angela's little mini CD pocket template and I made a, some little shakers to go in the pocket. Aren't they adorable? I love these. So I sat. Uh, it took me, hmm, I did 20 because I've got 20 journals, right? So this is what I did. And I saved the little cutout because I'm going to make... I'm going to do this up as a little tuck spot within the journal because we don't want to waste. So this is what I did. And hmm, I cut them out and then everything, well, I don't know, a couple of hours. You know, it probably ended up about three to four hours. But as I said, I had to do 20 of them. So it won't take you that long. But let me show you. And I, because I know you guys would like me to do a demo probably on how to do this. And I'm not, the only reason I'm not thinking of doing it, I don't know if you guys can get your hands on these. These I bought off of eBay in the UK. And they were like a, um, a food grade treat. And you, so you got the glassine back and the clear front. That's what I use to make my shaker with. And I just cut those in half, and then I had to glue. Because you cut that off, I ended up having to glue um, the sides so that they would hold. But it was a great use of these because I bought, you can see I had a hundred, and look at how many I've got left. I've only used a few. Um, so that's how I made them. Um, otherwise, I would show you guys how to make these, but it's I'm just afraid you couldn't get your hands on those. So what you'll need, you can use acetate, but this was nice because it's very flexible. And um, so that's how I ended up doing those. Oh, so anyways, guys, that's what that's what I've been staying busy. You know, just here and there on things. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm bouncing all over the place at the moment between shabby chic and Christmas colors. So, um, okay, so I thought I'd share that. All right, that should have dried. So here we are. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and get these glued in, and then, then I think we're done on, on part two. Um, and again, use your... A good heavy duty glue of choice because you're gluing on fabric now, right? So it can't just be any old glue because you've got to have something that's going to adhere to that material. And I, I'm pretty generous um, when I'm gluing on top of fabric because I don't want to have any chance that that uh, might not. You know, you want you want things done right, don't you? All right, so now let's just get that down. Because remember, you're going over the, the sari as well, because that was our closure. This is, I think this is going to be so sweet. I can't wait to get these done. I'm so excited about Christmas this year. 
Probably because it's, you know, we all know it ain't been a great start to the year, has it? So let's just be praying that it's a better ending. Um, and I want to get all these ready so when I go home, I can take a suitcase full of December dailies. <laughs> oh, gosh. The stuff I carry back and forth. Unreal, but... That's the only way I can do it. It's too expensive just to nail everybody. So yeah, I'm quite excited about it. I just want to... I never seem to get organized in time to do my Christmas crafts. So this year, it's like, okay. It's time to get myself straightened out. Get my Christmas cards done. Get these done. I'd like to make some handmade uh, ornaments. For, but it just depends on if I can come across the stuff that I want to do it with. Alright guys, I think I think we're okay to show that now. Let me get all this washi put away. I've got a mess going on here and i got to change gears and go back into shabby chic here. So, <clears throat> okay. So, there again, just take time, guys, and really get all that down because you don't want any of that. It will try to buckle, uh, it's particularly on those corners where you've got a little bit more fabric. Just be go over and over it until that's absolutely down. Okay? And then, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so here we are now. So now you can see what I'm talking about. You got that little bit of um, that's our cheesecloth, and I just think it's you know just makes it. Now that's hanging out too much, so I'm going to cut that off a bit and just I just like it because it it's, makes it a bit more shabby. All right, so that's how she's looking. I'm not going to leave it plain, don't, so don't worry. We're going to come back and do something on here, and I don't know yet if it'll be a pocket with maybe a nice tag. I don't know. I haven't got that far, but the main thing is you can see. You see it's flat, just like a normal journal would be, but now when we open it up, there's just... A little bit, it doesn't really show, a little bit of space there. And that's why they call it the hidden spine. And see, look at how nice and flat. Now, again, when we add embellishments, it's, it's not going to be this flat, but it's certainly much, much better for um, people who like to, to journal. And a December daily would be. So I'm quite pleased. I'm really, really pleased with how that's come out. This is that envelope that we've, we're we going to have this a big journal card in here. So I'll have to do some doctoring up on this. But this is where I'll probably go with some uh, scrapbook paper and do a nice, maybe another pocket or two here. We'll have the pocket in there. And then on this side, we'll do something as well, maybe a flip out again. Oh, I did do this. You know the little grocery, uh, little shopping list you can get at Dollar Tree or wherever? Uh, oh gosh, we're nearly out of time. What I did here, that was that extra bit of paper. I've sandwiched two of those and glued them, so isn't that cute? So it's more journaling space. And then it's got the shopping list, but what if, I just think that's so cute. And then this is going to flip out. We'll do something there, probably. Christmas card. I'm going to cover this. I like the little presents, but that I'll probably make a little pocket here. So there it goes, guys. I'm, I'm really happy how those are coming out. Now I've only got 19 more of those to do. <laughs> Anyways, guys, take care. I'll be back soon with part three.